Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Feb, and we are going to be going over some stuff that has just released. So they re updated the December PTR patch notes along with there's going to be some downtime here in about five hours. So I think it's like 1 p.m. Pacific time or 1 a.m. Pacific time for three hours. They're going to be addressing some things and doing some things during that time. So we'll go over that as well. So let's just go ahead and just jump right into it. So the PTR testing. So the level 60 backstory now provides trade skills at 200 up from 180. And level 60 backstory now has teleportation shrines unlocked. And this requires you to have a new character for this to take place or have effect, which is a big plus because when you get into the PTR, everything, all trade skills are 180. So if you wanted to test something at 200, you had to like level it all the way up which kind of sucked. And then on top of that, the teleportation shrines, thank you because it's a big headache having to try like play around with the PTR and then have to start at like first light and then travel all the way to Great Cleave because you have no teleportation, right? It's just very inconvenient. So I'm glad they made that change. Um, moving forward, um, where's my, oh, there's my mouse. Like, where's my mouse? So uh, end game changes. So as a result of PTR feedback, we made the following changes. We introduced a new type of gypsum called diamond gypsum. I'll be making a video kind of breaking this down, giving you a guide. I'm kind of waiting until everything is set in stone before I make this video just because I don't want to make it and then have it be incorrect or have stuff missing. So keep an eye out for that video. Um, I'm just kind of collecting data as it comes and putting it together while we wait. So during the Winter Convergent Festival, level 60 players will earn this gypsum when interacting with the first three trees of light a day. So the best way to look at it is this is basically like a like your your faction bonus you get every day for your first three missions. You do your first three missions of the day for the Winter Conver uh, Convergence Festival. You get this gypsum. Our goal is to give players even more options to progress through their expertise as well improve the rewards of the winter future events. So they've been hearing a lot of negative feedback about the gypsums and like the, you know, upgrading your expertise level, so on and so forth. So they're basically just trying to give us more avenues to go ahead and increase the expertise level that we want. So each day for the first three interactions of the tree lights and settlements will grant presents that will also grant a lockbox with a gift of appreciation for participating in the festivities. So again, basically what I was going after, um, reduce the cost of crafting a gypsum orb from 100 coin to 2.5 and the gypsum cast from 475 to five. We decided there was no need to add another coin expense for our level 60 players, but kept a minimal amount so the end game territory earners can earn a little bit more tax which makes sense because uh well i mean i don't know it's kind of hard to say like as a level 60 player i don't have problems getting gold i can do opr i can sell some stuff i can either just go crap uh go gathering some resources put them on sale make a couple grand pretty quick but i understand if you're going to be crafting a lot of these orbs 100 gold 475 coin that's going to add up, especially if you're doing it daily. And a lot of people who are going to be grinding this stuff are going to be probably doing it daily or at least a couple times a week. And if you have to spend, I don't know, 1,000 to 2,000 coin on just getting these casts, let alone your taxes and all that, it's going to really bog the player down. So they also reduced the cooldown on Topaz uh, Gypsum Attunement Potion from weekly down to daily, which means players will now be able to earn enough Topaz Gypsum to craft an orb each day. We also reduced the crafting ingredients to make it less difficult to craft and increase the drop rate of Topaz Gypsum when the potion is in effect. So they gave that a buff, which is good to see. Reduced Gypsum Earn cooldown timers from 22 hours to 18 hours to give a little bit more leeway to people's play schedules. That is a good call because sometimes some players play, like for instance, for me, I usually play at six, but sometimes, you know, I'll play like eight, nine, 10 o'clock, and then that could throw my whole, like, my cooldowns out of whack, right? So, adjusted the way expertise bumps work. So, there's a minimum as well as a maximum. The minimum is set to two, and the maximum starts at five and ramps down to two. Our goal is to average around 35 bumps required to get a min to max expertise. So, this is telling us that with the gypsum, their goal is for you to have 35 bumps before you go from like 500 to 600. So that's not terrible. So 
if you're doing this every day and you're starting at 500 without doing any other side activities, you'll probably be looking at about 35 days to max out your level to 600. There is ways to still increase your expertise level through, you know, doing the elite chest runs and killing elite bosses. Um, I, I forgot which final expedition they said it was going to be. Oh man, this is, I don't, I, maybe it was Lazarus. I think, uh, was it Lazarus? Uh, somebody in the comment down below, which one it was, I totally forgot. But regardless, there's going to be other ways to do this. So I think you might be able to reduce this by a quarter. So you could probably get this down to like 25, 20 days if you really want to. And that's for one item. And granted, you can do more than one cast a day. So it's just, you do like the musket cast one day. You have to wait the next day to do a musket again, right? So gypsum is not rewarded for completing an event rather than giving the reward cash from the event. Okay, so they basically are making it that you have to complete the event instead of just participating and then leaving early. Uh, please note that these two issues will be addressed before the feature goes live. So Corrupted Breach is currently giving two amethyst just gypsum. The gypsum, I have a problem with that word. Uh, this should be one. So they... That's going to be getting nerfed. Is it possible to earn more than to 10 Topaz Gypsums a day? This is beyond attended daily limit. So not supposed to be earning 10 a day. Um, I'm not going to go through all these perk changes and reading them all up, but I'm going to note the most noticeable ones. So logging, mining, skinning, harvesting have all been increased for the ratio. So harvesting speed, speed skin increasing Jesus, by 5 to 25%. They increased that range. I think it was 5 to 20% originally for the new perk. Um, played crits, critical strikes against targets below 50% health, inflict a disease for 6 seconds, reducing healing effectiveness on target by 10 to 25%, can't trigger more than once per attack. So this is going to be very good against healers. I think this is going to be shifting the meta quite drastically. Um, I, I, healers are just going to be paladin builds, aren't going to be as effective if somebody's running this perk. So if you know you're going to be running up with you know that paladins are going to be going after healers in particular you would probably be going at going for this plague strikes melee weapon heavy attacks against targets inflict disease for eight seconds reducing healing effectiveness on the target by 10 to 25 percent this is going to be good for wars on um, when you guys are battling on the points you're going to want to have this perk attached because as we all know, you always throw the heals on the center target or on the point, right? This is going to really prevent the healing effectiveness of players. So healers aren't going to be as good anymore. Uh, thwart encounter melee damage. Well, I should I should clarify. Healers aren't going to be good in PvP as much. They're gonna, there's going to be a little bit of weakness and there's going to be a little bit of a meta shift in the wars. Uh, thwart encounter melee weapon weapons deal 5 to 15 percent additional damage against targets with active grit so this is going to be a good counter to heavy like tanks and all that uh trenchant recovery fully charged heavy attacks heals the player for 10 to 30 percent of the damage dealt hmm hmm i like this one i like this one this one i think i'm going to use my rip your build I think that'd be pretty good because I do because usually after the stun, right, I go behind do a backstab with a full heavy attack that get ten to thirty percent of health. Ooh, that's good. That is really good. Um, perk bug fix rogue perk uh, fix the rogue perk to no longer increase crit damage on standard crits. It will now apply backstabs only. Makes sense. Rogue perk you want it to hit in the back. Um, some other general changes. Expertise level uh, per slot now shows on the inventory screen, which is nice because previously, or at least during the PTR, it wasn't showing. Um, fixed a number of bugs to the Winter Convergence, uh, Convergence Festival. Made several balance changes to the Winter Convergence Festival, including making related encounters less punishing for solo players. That's kind of nice. It's kind of hard to find groups in PTR, honestly. Um, it's just kind of hard, right? Because everybody's kind of testing things. Nobody, or they're just doing PvP. So it's kind of nice for the for them to lower it for that at least. Fix the number of NPCs who were buried in the recently fallen snow. 
Oh, there, there's NPCs that were buried. I did, that's funny. Uh, fix a number of bugs with the new camp skin system. Sp oh man. Speaking of which, the I don't know if you guys seen the. So there's a tier. Is it was well, a level two hundred furniture, right? Camping skin. Things like a hundred, like everything. It's super expensive. It's crazy. But I mean, at the same time, I like I like how expensive it is because then if you see it, you're like, dude. This guy's been playing the fucking game, but at the same time, as someone for majority of players, that's going to be kind of hard to get. Fix the bug causing screen to blur after interacting with the crafting station. Fix the number of description issues on new items. Fix the bug with Adina's fountain. MSQ not counting killed corrupted tendril. Fix the bug causing white rectangle icons in the armory store during invasion. Fix the bug with missing MSQ icons from the map and the compass. So that's pretty much it for the PTR update and changes, or at least the patch notes. So they did state that, what's the date? I think it was the 14th, right? So I think Tuesday the 14th, this is going to be going live. Because on, I think this, it might even be this one here. They said, let's just clarify here since I'm already here. I want to make sure you guys get the right information. Um, I want to say they, for the Winter Convergence Festival, they said it was releasing yep winter convergence festival 12 14 through 1 11. so this is going to be going live next tuesday and this will be lasting until january 11th so you got like about a month time to play this event so when this goes live i assume all of this other stuff in the ptr is going to be going live with it so keep an eye out i'll obviously let you guys know if anything changes or anything else comes up um they do have some downtime schedule today for the new world update 1.1.2 um so it's gonna be tomorrow 1 a.m so it's like three four hours from now and um here are the weeks so they're gonna be working on technical groundwork for server merges we know that server merges are going to be happening this week for at least eu central and asia i believe it was or australia or something like that so if you guys are in that, keep your heads up. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. World experience, they are t getting rid of the Turkey Terror time. So the limited time Turkey Terror world event has been disabled and will return in the future. Gobble, gobble. So I think they are going to be, I think the event's done. So if you haven't got your big turkey leg, monstrous turkey leg, whatever it's called, I feel for you. I was able to fight them like three or four times. It was, eh, it was all right. It was different and it was exciting that first day but after that it kind of i was like eh, eh. <laughs> uh and then housing players are now able to repurchase and utilize houses that were lost during rollback um should also allow players to pay taxes on houses they own if they encounter this issue i don't think anybody i know got it taken care of or had that issue so but yeah regardless hopefully hopefully this found you guys and you guys were able to like get something from it hopefully this guy this keeps you up to date i do have another video coming out tomorrow this video is going to be basically um I, i'm like doing like a housing challenge with myself i'm trying to get to the top of the leaderboard without doing any missions and with only crafting the stuff like furniture wise and seeing if i can beat it beat the people who are buying like the dlc microtransaction stuff and the people who are like pounding out a lot of missions so it's interesting it was a lot of fun it was um, definitely a change of pace for me and it kind of brought me back to my minecraft day so i dug it a lot so if you guys are interested in that make sure to check it out tomorrow but otherwise i'll see you guys next time have a good night